All right, let's talk about frequency and period of a wave. Frequency and period are properties of periodic waves, which is kind of why they're called periodic waves. And so frequency is the number of waves that pass a given point in a certain amount of time. Do you remember, a periodic wave is a wave that hits again and again and again repeatedly, and so the frequency characterizes how many times does it assault the medium in a given amount of time. Period is kind of, kind of the opposite of that in some sense. It's how long does it take for one wave to assault the medium, all right? So we've got a real simple way of thinking about period. So imagine that you're out in the ocean, all right? You're on a boat in the ocean and you come to the crest of a wave. The period is how long it takes for you to go down and come back up to the next crest. So it's a real simple way of understanding what period means. All right, so let's go ahead and just do an example with frequency. Suppose that the frequency is three waves per second. And of course that makes sense. If frequency is how many waves come in a given amount of time, then three waves per second would indicate that in one second, three waves come. All right, but we don't usually use waves per second as a unit. Instead, we use the unit Hertz, which is named for a physicist who was actually the first guy to represent electromagnetic waves in 1887. All right. So we could say the frequency is three hertz. So what's the period? Well, let's see. If three waves come every second, then how long does each wave take? Well, three waves per second. Each one's gotta take a third of a second. So that gives us actually a very, very, very general relationship between frequency and period. Frequency is equal to one over period. That is always true. It follows directly from the definitions of these quantities. And that's always nice because that means I can always write it down and it will never be wrong. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some properties that are associated with this relationship. Frequency times period equals one. So what that means is that if I increase the frequency, well, geez, that number's getting bigger, but the product got to stay the same, so the period's got to go down. So bigger frequency, smaller period. Conversely, smaller frequency, bigger period. All right? Another thing that I've seen a lot of the tests ask, if I double the frequency, what happens to the period? Well, that's real easy because I've got a 2 here doubling the frequency but I need the product to remain the same. So I gotta put a one half there. So if I double the frequency, I cut the period in half. Conversely, if I cut the frequency in half, I double the period. Real, real, real simple, but sometimes students don't notice how that goes and how easy it is until they've seen an example. All right, one other important property about frequency and period, which will come up a lot later on in later studies of periodic waves is that period and frequency can't change. And that's actually the wonderful thing about period and frequency because other properties of the wave will change. If I go, like if I've got light coming in and it hits a piece of glass, a lot of its properties will change, but its frequency and period can't. Why? Well, it's real simple. If you got three waves coming in per second, you gotta have three waves going out per second because otherwise the waves are going to congregate at the boundary. And the boundary can't take that. So frequency and period can be used to characterize a wave as it travels through whatever it's going to travel through. No matter what happens to it, frequency and period remain the same. And that's frequency and period.